In this video, I'm going to show you the former home of Josef Goebbels at Lanka. As you can see, the house is still standing, as are many of the structures around it which Goebbels would have known and recognised. In East German times, the complex was built up, so today there are many buildings around it, for what was once a place of education, or should I say, indoctrination, as well as recreation for the communist regime. These buildings are today empty and the property of the city of Berlin are awaiting ideas for their future use. They have been abandoned since 1992 at the latest. However, one building important to this story does not survive. That's the house that Joseph Goebbels first had built here, the one where he entertained Czech actress Lida Barova. That building was destroyed by fire in 2015 and despite being a listed building, damage was so great that it was knocked down. So the, the house that you see here uh, was never visited by Lida Barova. The relationship between her and Josef Goebbels had finished before the first stones were actually laid to build it. This is a story of corruption on a grand scale and one also which would grace the pages of a scandal magazine due to the sexual adventures of Josef and Magda Goebbels, although not with each other. I think of this video as being somewhat similar to another video I've prepared on the house of the Goebbels family at Schwanenwerder in Berlin, which you also might want to watch. And as well as that one, I've done a number of other videos related to Josef Goebbels and his wife, whom I think it fair to say were the first family of the Third Reich. I visited Lanka in early July 2023 and the film that you actually see here uh, was made then. During this video, you will see exactly what it looks like today and I hope you find it interesting. Lanka is a hamlet some 50 kilometers to the northeast of the center of Berlin. On the occasion of his 39th birthday, Josef Goebbels was given by the city of Berlin this forest site with the Borgensee Lake. Goebbels appears to have come out here for the first time in the middle of September 1936. The location was chosen by Karl Hanke, who was his assistant at the time. In his diary, Goebbels writes, All around the deepest solitude, Hanke has done a good job. The Reich Labour Front provided the manpower to erect a two-storey wood-framed house at the water's edge. In order to maintain the deeper solitude, a tall wire fence was put around the outside to keep the riffraff out. After the 1936 Nuremberg rally, Goebbels flew to Greece with his family and it's certainly worth reading his diary to get a description of what he saw as a tourist there. On returning to Germany, he set about furnishing the house at Lanka possibly with Lida Barova in mind. However, the first Goebbels to put the house to its intended use was not Josef, but his wife Magda, who took Hanka there the day before the exchange of papers. I don't know if the two of them were involved at the time or if anything even happened there on this day. However, Magda admitted in July 1939 that she was having an affair with Karl Hanka as from 1938. As Hanke was entertaining Magda, Goebbels took the opportunity to visit his house at the Schwanenwerde, where he telephoned Lida Barova to suggest that he pop round for a cup of tea. She thought it improper that he visit her there whilst her boyfriend Gustav Froehlich was in Karlsbad, so he suggested a visit to Lanka, no doubt choosing a date when the property was not being visited by his wife. He took Lida out there several times. On one occasion, his manservant Kaiser burned the only food they had, which was potatoes. Despite the distance from Berlin and his home at Schwanenwerder, Goebbels would frequently motor out there to escape from his wife. At the same time as the leaders of the Third Reich, Goebbels amongst them were discussing laws on adultery and divorce, the propaganda minister would frequently find Lida Barova waiting for him there, whilst his wife was at their other home looking after their children. By this time, she had left Gustav Froelich and Goebbels had given her a key to the house, 
at Lanka. Admittedly, not the front gate, but one can get in via the back entrance just as well. They slept in different rooms. Both usually had an early start in Berlin, and the manservant Kaiser would wake them at five in the morning. Goebbels, the man of the people, managed to acquire more of the publicly owned forest, and the taxpayer footed the bill to landscape it to his taste. In this way, the property soon benefited from a private beach with jetty boardwalks around the marshy parts and specially brought in deer. Magda Goebbels, although no paragon of virtue and faithfulness, eventually complained to Hitler. Leader must have sensed that something would come amiss when one of the two swans that inhabited the Bergensee Lake died. It's an omen, she said. It's all over. Hitler told Goebbels that he had to drop Leder, and the minister obeyed his Führer. He told her that he could never see her again. Then on Saturday the 15th of October 1938, he did something very odd, and we know this from his diary. He pretended that he wanted to kill himself. His driver, Rack, brought him out to Lanka. There he took two Panodorm sleeping tablets with a good quantity of alcohol and went to bed. He slept in, but no one other than his driver and manservant knew about it. He paid for this act with a throbbing headache and sulked at Lanka until the 18th of October 1938, when he went back to Berlin. There is a second version of this story, which is the following. According to Max Winkler, Goebbels' financial advisor and agent, the minister sent Rack to Magda with farewell letters addressed to her and his mother. Magda persuaded Rack to take her to Lanka, where she threw herself across what she took to be his lifeless form and begged him to come back to life. With such a request, how could Goebbels possibly refuse? It took Goebbels several months before trying to make his marriage work. It might have been pressure from his rival Hanka, who had even showed Magda around his new lakeside house at Gustav Freierstrasse 13 in the Grunwald in Berlin. In the meantime, Goebbels, not content with the small house in Lanka, was in the process of building a lakeside mansion. This is the mansion that you can see today, and this is the one I visited in July 2023. It was here on the 22nd of August when he was with his wife inspecting the construction works on the property that he received a telephone call from Hitler, who was overjoyed. Hitler told him that he'd just briefed his senior military officers on the upcoming planned deal with the Soviet Union and the plans to attack Poland. As tens of thousands of homes were destroyed in Poland, the Goebbels mansion was handed over and the minister named it the Haus am Borgensee. Nearly 200 people were working on the building. The former guardhouse used by his manservant Kaiser was converted into a 16 by 9 metre long guesthouse for two families. There was a swimming pool measuring 20 metres by 8 metres which cost 24,000 marks. The new guest house cost 30,000 marks. Alterations after completions to the cinema, drawing room and Magda's private bedroom cost 100,000 marks and the children's rooms 140,000 marks. Bird tables were put up in the forests. The bill by the end of October 1940 was 2,663,052 marks and 58 pfennigs. But that was not everything. During the first summer, it was realised that some form of mosquito control was needed and that the roads were insufficient. Then Goebbels decided that for security reasons he needed radio equipment. That brought the bill to over 3 million marks. Then there were the furnishings. As some of this came from occupied France and the Netherlands, no doubt acquired at knockdown prices from people forced to sell them, then the price may not have been very high. There were 18th century tapestries and paintings by Van Dyck and Goya. These costs were not only met by the taxpayer. Goebbels controlled the movie industry in Germany and this business helped him out with around 2.3 million marks. Goebbels, however, doesn't appear to have been particularly grateful. He wrote in his diary, If I were to die now, I'd just about break even. A fine reward for 20 years service to the fatherland. My family would be in for quite a shock. The winter of 1939-40 was particularly cold and the German economy, designed for war, was unable to provide what was needed for peace. Coal and food were rationed. 
William Shirer, the American broadcaster, wrote of people wearing their outer clothing inside and people coming over to his home in order to warm themselves up and get a warm bath. Whereas there may have been no heating in the propaganda ministry, Goebbels was able to arrange for workers to put up additional security fencing around Lanka and surrounded by forests, there was enough wood to burn to keep the family warm. Hitler visited Lanka on several occasions just as he visited the other Goebbels home in Schwanenwerder where Magda had prepared a special guest room for him. One such visit took place just after the fall of France. On the 25th of August 1940, the Luftwaffe bombed London. The first bombing raid may have been an accident. However, the RAF responded in kind with a bombing attack on Berlin. During the autumn and winter of 1940-41, there were a number of bombing attacks on the German capital. Whereas these attacks were not much more than nuisance raids, particularly when compared to later attacks, they were enough to frighten many Berliners and force them into air raid shelters. One of those who got frightened was Goebbels, and he retreated to Lanka, out of the way of the attackers. On the 2nd of October 1940, a British plane was shot down near Lanka, and Goebbels went to see it, as well as the charred remains of three aviators. On the 10th of April 1941, Goebbels invited some of his staff out to Lanka. As they were casually strolling around the lake, he asked, How do you think the German people are going to react to a war with Moscow? It would be their ministry's biggest ever task. For 15 years, they demonized the Soviets. Then Hitler signed a pact with Stalin. If we do another about face, he pointed out, no one's ever going to believe us again. In this way, his staff learned of Operation Barbarossa. In November 1941, there was an attempt to kill Goebbels with an IED on the bridge leading to Schwanenwerder. The plot failed, but it terrified Goebbels. As a result, he ordered more security and machine gun nests were placed around the house at Lanka. Hitler also chipped in with an armour-plated Mercedes. As the fate of the war turned, the position of Goebbels in the aristocracy of the Third Reich increased. On the 22nd of November 1942, the German Sixth Army was surrounded at Stalingrad. Hitler requested that Bormann visit Goebbels at Lanka on the 28th of December 1942 to prepare what Bormann described as a total effort by the German people to increase its war potential. This suggests that almost five weeks before the surrender at Stalingrad, Hitler had already written off the 6th Army. Not long before, he had refused the permission to break out when such a breakout had some chance of success. Total war would mean that people would no longer have access to many of the services that they enjoyed in peacetime in order to release people for either the armed services or weapons production. Goebbels was in complete agreement with this and noted during dinner with Bormann that he was glad to have always lived in a frugal wartime style. On the 1st of January 1943, Goebbels wrote in his diary at Lanka, I see my main task in the weeks ahead to be to radicalise our internal management of the war so that there can be no more talk of sparing the home front from the war effort. The radical and most total war is the shortest. This was to be his slogan for his infamous total war speech in the Berlin Sport Blast several weeks later. The situation at the front just got worse and worse. In the summer of 1943, the offensive in the east failed. North Africa was lost and Italy invaded. For nearly two years, the RAF had left Berlin alone. However, in the autumn of that year, it was back with a vengeance. There were massive raids on the capital. As the citizens of Berlin hurried to the air raid shelters, the Goebbels family got its most precious possessions out of their homes in Schwanenwerder and Hermann Göringstrasse and brought them to Lanka. Fearing that even the distinctive shaped mansion at Lanka was a target for bombers, Goebbels ordered it draped with 8,000 square metres of camouflage netting, something that would have been appreciated in a war zone whilst the chance of a bomber hitting the house would have been next to nothing, given the technology of the time. Whilst most Berliners had to stay put to do their urgent war work, Magda and the children, alongside his mother and sister, were moved to Lanka too. Today we can read on the website of the little town of Vandlitz. 
alongside the Nazi crimes that took place in the area, that the Goebbels' children took a pony cart to school there each day. No pony cart for Goebbels, though. If he had to go to the propaganda ministry, his driver, SS Sturmfuhrer Alfred Rach, took him to Berlin in an unmarked Mercedes with bodyguards tailing them. Alfred Rach was born on the 8th of February 1911 in East Prussia and maintained a strong Danzig accent in Berlin. He started driving Goebbels in 1933. His last job for him was to burn his corpse. Each evening, Rach returned with Goebbels between 1800 hours and 1900 hours. As American and British bombers pulverised Berlin, forewarned by telephone, Goebbels would watch the destruction of the capital from the safety and comfort of Lanka. Very occasionally in 1944, Goebbels would take the risk of staying in his apartment in Berlin in the knowledge that, unlike most Berliners, he had a safe bunker to retreat to. Christmas 1944 was the last to be spent by the family at Lanka. Magda Goebbels said to her secretary, Next year we'll surely be at peace. Once the festivities were complete, Goebbels' sister Maria and his mother left Lanka and he never saw them again. In the middle of January 1945, the front on the Vistula River broke. Soviet armoured columns pierced through Poland, reaching the German border in Silesia. With the Red Army now only around 200 kilometres to the east, Goebbels decided that Lanka was too close for comfort. On the 31st of January 1945, he sent his orderly, Schwegermann, out to Lanka to collect Magda, their six children and two governesses, and take them to the air raid shelter at his home in Berlin at Schwanenwerder. He never returned to Lanka again. <laughs>